Hello, everyone. We're going to start the screen sharing. So just want to make sure that everybody can see the screen and hear me OK. And we will get right into it. <clears throat> so as previously mentioned, this is a webinar going over the basic features of Avenza Maps for iOS. Um, we're only doing iOS in this session. Android has already been done. And we will go through adding maps, looking for maps in the map store, importing, etc. cetera. Uh, so we're going to open the app to start. And when you first open the app, the screen you'll see is My Maps. So your My Maps tab is where all of your maps live. So this can be maps that you've imported, your custom maps, or maps that you've gotten from the map store. If you are downloading the app for the first time, or you've reinstalled it for the first time, you'll see a slightly different screen when you open the app. And it will have a picture, and it will ask you to sign in to your map store account. So we always recommend making a map store account, because this keeps a record of all of your purchases or downloads from the map store. And with your map store account, you can log into it on any other device you use Eventa Maps on. So if you use Eventa Maps on your iPad and you purchase some maps, you can log into your map store account on your iPhone or your Android device and download those maps from your account. So you can log into up to five devices with your map store account, and it just keeps a record of your maps for whenever you switch devices. So you can see your map store account is the head and shoulders icon at the top. And if you tap it, you will see this dialog come up. Your logout is on the right. You can close it if you're done looking at it. And then if you want to access maps that you have purchased previously, you'll go into your download history. You can also change your password or change your email from this little dialog box. So we're going to go right into the map store. So the map store is the shopping cart icon on the bottom between layers and settings. So the iOS map store is very colorful, has a lot going on. So you can search for maps in different ways. There are the three arrows on the top right. There are find maps, recently added maps, and popular maps. And you can also scroll through the categories that are shown here and see some maps that are suggested. They're sorted by categories such as hunting and fishing, topographic, nautical, et cetera. So you can see maps here either have a cost associated with them or can be for free. So if they do have a cost associated with them, you will have to have a credit card or a PayPal account set up with your Apple ID. So the main way to search for maps is we'll go right to the find maps option here and it will take you to a map of your location. So we'll see that we're in Toronto um, and we have all of the blue pins represent maps. And you can see on the bottom as well, the results, it puts all of the maps in a list. So you can see, scroll through some of them. So we have some historical maps of Toronto, transit maps, et cetera. So there are a few ways to search for maps. You can search on the map itself. So if I move north, it will, take a second and it will load more maps north of me and continue to move. You can search directly on the map for the area you're looking for. It will also update the list below or you can type in the maps you're looking for in the search bar. You can search by title, you can search by area, uh, whichever you think is best. There's also the option to filter your search. So on the top right, under the battery, you'll see a funnel icon. So if you tap that, it'll open up and it'll give you options to filter your results. So if you don't want to purchase any maps, you can turn on the free maps only filter and that way you'll only see free maps. You can also search by category, which are some of the ones that we saw earlier in the map store. Popular ones include recreation, topographic, hunting and fishing, uh, you can turn all of these on or turn them off. You just have to tap them and you'll see the little check marks come up beside them. And that's how you know they're on. And if you tap them again, they'll turn off. And the free maps only, you turn the toggle, and it will turn on and off. You can also search for maps on our website, um, eventamaps.com. And there are more filters available when searching on the website. So you can search there for maps you're looking for or if someone sends you a link. And you can add maps from
from the website directly to your Map Store account, and then you can download them to your device from your Map Store account. So if you did that, you would just go back to the head and shoulders icon that we looked at previously, and in your download history, you would see the maps you added, and you would select them to download them to your device. So we are going to go ahead and search for a map. We're going to look for the TTC map. So the TTC is the Toronto Transit Commission. We'll type that in and see what comes up. So we can see the blue dot in the center beside the pin that represents our location. And then the red box shows our ex the extent of the map. So this is the area that the map covers. So if we open the map up, it gives us the description, who it's published by, the size of the map, as well as the language and when it was published. So if we tap the free button and then install, it will download the map to our My Maps tab. We press OK. And then let's go back to our maps. So we can see the map is still loading. So when it comes in, uh, the map will have to download, extract, tile. It may take a moment, but try and keep your screen on and your phone or your device on events and maps while it's downloading maps from the map store, especially if they're big maps or bundles. Otherwise, you risk a network disruption, which can cause the map not to download. So your map is sitting here, and you'll see we only have one, so we'll add another map. And this time, instead of finding a map from the map store, we are going to import a map. So to import a map, we'll press the plus button at the top beside the edit, and this window pops up. So there are multiple ways to get maps. You can get maps from the store, like we just looked at. You can request maps. You can import maps from iTunes file sharing, Dropbox, from a URL, or from a QR code. So we're going to use a QR code. You'll have to have your permissions enabled to allow Avenza to use your camera. So if this is your first install and you go to import from a QR code, it will ask you, um, do you give Avenza Maps permission to use your camera? You'll hit yes. So the QR code is the little square icon on the top of the blue bar there. So we're going to turn that and our camera is going to come on. And it's going to read the QR code super quickly. And then it will take a second, but it should start to download. So we'll see the map is downloading. So if you're looking to import your own maps, they're going to have to be uh, geo-referenced, which means that they have to have real-world coordinates. And they must be in uh, geo-PDF, geo-TIFF, geospatial PDF format. So we're going to look now at the different options in your My Maps tab. So you can see on the left, there's an option to sort by distance. So we're on both of these maps. You can see beside each map, it has the title, and then it says on map, and then the size. So if we sort by distance, it won't do too much since we're on both of the maps. But we can sort by name, we can sort by date, or we can sort by storage used. So if you have a lot of maps, sometimes it's easier to sort by name or date from when you imported them, and you can pick which one works best for you. And then on the right, opposite of the sorted by distance option, there's a little search bar as well as the uh, three lines going down. And the three lines is a filter option. So you can filter your maps depending on if they're from the map store, if you've imported them, or they're in folders or collections, if they're active, inactive, maps only, or all items. So right now, because we only have two, we have it set to all items. But we can filter, so if we chose maps from the map store, it would show the little three lines become highlighted with a blue box behind them, saying that they're filtered. So we just see the TTC map. And then if we chose imported maps, it will show us just the imported map that we did there. For our purpose, we're going to keep it at all items. So when you look at a map or you want to go in and view it, you will tap it and it will load and you can zoom in or zoom out. So if you zoom in, you can put your two fingers close together and pinch, push apart. And if you want to zoom out, you will pinch your fingers 
together. You can also double tap to zoom in with one finger and it will zoom in or you can double tap with two fingers and it will zoom out. I prefer the pinching method. I think it's a little bit easier than tapping all the time. You can also see we have our toolbar on the bottom of this map. So we have our compass on the left with the little arrow. We have a place mark option, the coordinates, as well as the map features, which is the pin with three lines icon and the wrench. So first we're gonna look at the coordinates, which are in the middle. So if we tap the coordinates, this option will come up and it will show how you are viewing the coordinates in the display format. So you can choose which coordinate system you would like to see these in or view them. So automatically it opens to longitude and latitude and the map default. So whatever coordinate system or projection your map is in. And then there's the option for lat long WGS 84. So that puts it into um, WGS 84. There's also the option for easting and northing and that uses the map's projection. So if the map is not projected properly, then that can be inaccurate. And then there's also the option last for MGRS slash USNG, which is a military grid system. So if you want to choose how you view this, you'll open it and then you can select a different one and it will show at the bottom. We'll keep ours in the map default though for now. So your location, which is probably one of the most important things on the map, you will press the little compass button on the left and it will take you in center right on your location. You'll see that it has your location on it if it, your arrow is blue. So let's use a bigger map. So we'll open the TTC map. So if we're zoomed in elsewhere and we wanna to go to our location, we'll tap the button and it will bring us right back to where we are. If you have this on, it will also follow your location. And if you're on a map, or you're looking at a map that is of an area you're not in or somewhere else, then it will say not on map and it will appear at the bottom where the coordinates are. So there's also the option to use the compass. So if you tap the um, arrow button again, it should turn the compass mode on. You can see now my map is moving around and it all depends on the direction I'm pointing. And you can see at the top as well that there it says 120 degrees southeast and it will move as long as I'm moving the map. So not all devices have compasses. Uh, it depends on your device and your model. This one does, so we can see it. And to turn it off, you will just tap the button again and it will bring you back there we go. Okay, so next we'll look at adding place marks. So place marks are the little pin icon beside the compass. So if we want to drop a place mark at Downs view, we're going to center our crosshair over the spot we'd like to drop the place mark and we'll press the button. So what comes up here is the place mark options. You can choose your symbol. So we have here purple, green, red. If you tap the three buttons, you can choose your different colors or recreational symbols. Let's make our pin orange. And then if you want to add photos, you can add photos here. The description can be edited. There's your location with your Latin long, as well as the time. You can also change the name if you want. We're just going to keep ours named placemark one. And when you're done and happy with your information, you'll hit submit. And there we go. So there's our first placemark. You can also edit the place mark by tapping the little eye. It will bring the dialog back up and you can edit the information if you need to at any other time. Another important tool is recording tracks. So to record tracks, you will go to the tools icon, which is the little wrench on the bottom right. And the little pop up will come up and you will use the record GPS tracks tool. So if you press that, you'll see on the bottom, it's kind of hard to see with the map underneath, but you'll see there's start above the compass and the place mark, as well as the cancel button. So because I'm not actually moving anywhere, we won't really be recording a track, but you'll press start when you want to start recording. 
and then you will press stop, which appears again on the left when you're done. And you'll have this little bubble come up. When you're done, you'll press stop. But since I don't have a track to a track to record, I'm going to import one and show you what it looks like. Okay. So when you go to import data on a map, there is the map features, which is the pin with three lines icon. This will open up and I'm just going to the square with the arrow down and we're just going to import our data from Dropbox. Here we go. So our track has been added and we can see it there in orange. So if we want more information about the track, we can tap it. It says that it's 0.96 miles and it took about 22 minutes. We tap the eye, it will come up and it will give us more information. So we can edit the information about the track. We can do the title. We can change the style. So if we want a different color line, we can add photos, the description, and it has the time as well. And then another feature of the track is you can see the graph. So the graph shows your speed and your elevation. So if you scroll through at the bottom, it will give you all the statistics. So when you started your track, when you finished your track, your total moving time, speed, distance, and your min and max for elevation. The last thing we're going to look at is exporting data. So you can export data from your map features. And to do so, we're going to go back into our pin with three lines icon here on the bottom right beside the wrench. And we're going to choose the square with the arrow pointing up as the export option. So your export settings will come up here. You have the option to change the file name, where you're sending it to. You can export to email, Dropbox, iTunes file sharing, or if you're working with other iOS users, you can export via AirDrop. So if you're exporting via AirDrop, you have to ensure that you and the user you're sending it to are both on the same version of Events and Maps. If you're on different versions, it won't work. So please ensure that the person you're sending them to is using the exact same version. You can also change the format. So you can export to KML, CSV, or GPX. And if you're a pro user, you can export to Shapefile. You'll want to export all features. You can change this if you need to, but we're going to do all features. And then media size refers to the size of the pictures if you've taken any. So you can do no image if there's no images, large, medium, or small. And then Dropbox will take you to Dropbox directly, but if you choose email and you choose export, it will pop up with the other applications that can connect to it, such as Google Drive. So right now, um, Dropbox is the most common, or email, but if you choose email, you'll get access to the other cloud applications that you have on your device. So if you have OneDrive or SkyDrive or Box, it can pick them up, but they're not officially supported as of yet. So once you're done, you'll hit export, and then everything will be exported. So you'll see here, when I hit email, it gives you the option to export to other options, such as Drive, et cetera. And that's it for the day. So if you guys have any questions, please type them out, and we will get to them as soon as possible. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rebecca. That was great. Um, before, we have a couple of questions. I'm um, hoping that maybe you'll take a minute now to uh, type some more in. Um, but before we get to that, uh, I'll just let Rebecca catch her breath for a second before she goes over the questions. And I want to get some feedback from the audience. Um, in today's session, we covered mostly basic functionality in the app, but we're planning other sessions in the future that will cover more advanced features. So if you can please let us know. I'm just going to run a little poll here. 
Um, you should be able to see it now. If you want to just, you can choose as many of these five, op five options as you like and let us know what you would find most useful. Uh, the last option, other, if you click on that, uh, we'll, we'll follow up with you uh, later on to find out what that might be. <laughs> or you can actually just put that in the chat, what your other option would be. Okay, great. We'll just give it another 30 seconds or so if anybody else wants to answer, and then we'll go ahead. So if you want to get a, a question in, now is your chance to put it in the Q&A section, please. Okay. That's great. So Rebecca, are you ready for questions? I am. All right. Take it away. Okay. So I'll go in order. Um, I'm making collections, uh, moving maps in folders or collections. So if you don't have a folder or a collection yet, you'll have to create one. So if you press the edit button, there's the plus folder icon, and you'll choose that. And you can pick to make a folder or a collection. So right now, we'll just make a folder. And it'll make our new folder. And once you've done that, you can then move your maps to the folder. So if you select one of them, so say we select the local office map, and we choose then the folder with the move arrow, our folder will pop up here. And we'll select that. And then it will move our map into the folder. So when that is done and you're done moving, we're, I'm just going to move the one for now, you'll press done on the top right, and then your map will be in the folder. So all of that's controlled by the edit button on the top right. There's more information about um, creating maps, uh, sorry, creating folders and collections on the help center that we have, which is accessible at help.eventsandmaps.com. And we're also looking at doing a webinar specific to folders and collections. So that will be coming in the future. Okay, uh, OneDrive. To use OneDrive, as I mentioned previously, if you have it installed um, and you choose to export via email, it, it may pop up. As of right now, Your screen sharing has been ooh, uh-oh. Let's see. Sorry about that. Um, we are working on using other cloud applications, so that's coming for the future. So as of right now, um, Drive is the most, or is the official, or sorry, Dropbox is the officially supported um, cloud application, but we're looking at bringing in support for Draw, uh, OneDrive, Google Drive, et cetera. So that is coming in the future. Okay. Sorry, I'm just reading the other questions here. Donald, if it's possible, if you could uh, contact us directly um, with the exact issue, just so we can look at it in a little bit more detail, it's easier than um, going through all of this right now. I'll put the link out there. So if anyone has any questions that might be a little lengthy to answer here, you guys can contact us here. Just give me one second. Okay. So if there's any questions that I don't get to here, feel free to send us an email. Um, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. Uh, we can look into everything in more detail. Um, Josh, what kind of information um, are you looking at 
editing. When you import data into Avenza Maps, there's the schema information, um, but there's not a whole lot that can be edited in terms of, um, I'd say, the map itself. Um, so if you also could send us an email, that'd be great. And that way we can get into it a little bit more. Are there any other questions for the time being? Well, if any other questions come up, please don't hesitate to send us an email. Oh, there's a couple coming in. <laughs> Just fast and furious now. Um, Mark, in regards to the data, um, it should be attached to the individual maps. Um, if you open the um, the map features for each uh, each map, it should show in there as well. Um, and you can look that way. And then in your layers tab, it will also show you um, what their what layers are attached to what, but everything should be stored on the map. And Sally, for importing maps, if you're importing from Dropbox, you should be able to select multiple. Um, it depends exactly where you're importing from. It, and if you are importing a large number of maps, it may take a few minutes. Um, if you're using something else to import, if you can, again, I hate to keep saying this, but if you can send us an email, it's just easier to get more information so we can give you the best answer possible. Um, is there anything else I can answer for anybody right now? Looks like that's it for now. Thanks, Rebecca. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, the webinar will be available soon online, so you can rewatch if you have any questions. Again, please don't hesitate to reach out at any time. We can get back to you with some answers for your questions.